This week in the metaverse, PlayStation announces VR2, Samsung opens a virtual storefront in Decentraland, and the metaverse flexes its muscles at CES. What is up, guys? Welcome back to The Bull Combo. I hope you're all having a great 2022, and I hope you all had a great new year. I'm not really one for New Year's resolutions, but I do have a few goals for this year. Obviously, growing this channel is one, but another is releasing a new piece of art every day. Obviously, a new piece of daily art is quite a challenge, but it's one I'm excited to take on, and I've already found a lot of joy in it. So if you want to follow along on that daily art journey and check out any of my work, feel free to follow me over on Twitter at The Bull Combo. I tend to post multiple times a day, some of it being related to new projects, art, games, and other things I'm interested in. So if that interests you, make sure to follow me there. Now let's jump into this week's Metaverse update. The Sandbox has announced a new land sale. The Mega City land sale consists of 61 lands, 95 premium lands, and 7 estates, all around partners including Adrian Chang, Time Capital, and several others. Sandbox lands have been in hot demand recently, and the potential to snatch one for half the secondary floor price is enticing. One can imagine that the demand for this sale could be quite high. The Alpha Season 2 Game Jam is live, giving everyone a chance to possibly have their creations featured in the next Sandbox Alpha. In addition to that, the sports-themed Sandplay Game Jam is also currently live until January 9th. Both Game Jams come with several different sand prize amounts up for grabs. There's only two days left for the Sandplay Game Jam, so make sure to get those experiences submitted. The Sandbox Alpha survey is also available, so if you've participated in the first Sandbox Alpha, it might be a good idea to take a few minutes and fill out the survey. As a reward, every survey participant receives one raffle ticket toward a season pass for Alpha Season 2. PlayStation has announced a follow-up to the PlayStation VR with the VR 2. The new device will offer several key upgrades and enhancements, including a 4K HDR visual experience, headset-based controller tracking, and new sensory features such as 3D audio, headset feedback, and eye tracking. A few tech details include OLED displays, 120Hz refresh rate, 110 degree FOV, and USB Type-C charging. The original PlayStation VR suffered from relatively low visual quality, which may have been a key reason for the lower adoption and overall success. That said, there is still a strong fan base for PSVR, and we'll wait for a release date to be officially revealed. It was another week for the VB platform. They kicked off this year with the Daredevil number 131 and Incredible Hulk number 347 comic drops. They followed that up with the Myrmicornos Series 2 release. 2021 was a big year for Vivi, and they finished it off with the Immutable X migration, which saw all the Vivi NFTs migrate onto the ETH network via the IMX Layer 2 solution. The migration of OMI to the ETH network will also likely open the door for additional exchanges to list the token, meaning 2022 could be a fairly big year for OMI. A video recently surfaced on Twitter showing an alleged teaser of a Walmart Metaverse shopping experience. The video was met with mostly negative reaction, with many calling the experience dystopian and disconnected. It was revealed that the video is actually over five years old and was first debuted at the 2017 SXSW Festival with the help of a digital marketing and product development company called Mutual Mobile. The initial goal of the teaser at the time was to impress influencers in attendance at the festival. While the teaser itself definitely left a lot to be desired, it's interesting to see Walmart has been thinking about this technology for half a decade already. We can only hope that any future iteration of a virtual grocery shopping experience ends up a little less lonely than this teaser shows. The metaverse was out in force at this year's CES in Las Vegas. Multiple companies debuted pieces of technology, software, and concepts that in some way contribute to a greater metaverse experience. Here were some of the key reveals. Panasonic subsidiary Shiftall announced a $270 body tracking suit that's due for release this spring. The suit helps bring legs into the metaverse. Most people are currently traveling around today's VR experiences as only a head and torso, so this change, while initially seeming small, could actually be very large in the greater metaverse experience. Pebble Feel is a body-worn accessory that can recreate heat and cold to make virtual reality a little more lifelike. Additionally, it can also act as both a personal air conditioner and a personal heater. 
Samsung announced a series of TVs that can display NFTs. Additionally, they'll allow creators to share their art and potential buyers to preview an NFT before purchasing it, as well as learn about the NFT's history and blockchain metadata. NVIDIA announced plans to make their Omniverse software free to access for tech companies looking to create engaging and enriching metaverse content. Hyundai has announced the concept to allow robots to interact with the real world as an extension of actions and changes made within the metaverse. While that may be a ways off from full execution, one near-term example would be a factory worker operating a piece of machinery from a VR or AR headset using hand gestures as opposed to standing directly in front of the machine itself. All in all, CES showed us the tech industry is very aware of the metaverse and the race is officially on to provide access to it. On Tuesday, Qualcomm announced that it's working in collaboration with Microsoft on custom chips that would control lightweight augmented reality glasses for use by both consumers and businesses for metaverse apps. During the press conference, they stated that the two companies will work together to meet the custom chips with the software that developers need to create virtual worlds in which people can work and play. They went on to say that the future devices from the collaboration will work with a Microsoft software product called Mesh that allows users to beam a realistic likeness of themselves into the headset of another user so that it feels like the two people are in the same room. The future hardware will also use software from Qualcomm called Snapdragon Spaces that helps perform basic augmented reality functions like mapping out physical spaces so that digital objects can be overlaid on them, as well as hand tracking so that users can manipulate those digital objects with hand gestures. Neither of the two companies have provided details about exactly when the chips and headsets would become available. All right guys, and before we get into the last update for today, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel, make sure to consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting the bell to get notified. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel are two ways that really help the YouTube algorithm push this video out to other users that will find it useful. So again, if you find this information useful and if you find yourself coming back to view this content, make sure to give it a like and then hit subscribe and hit that bell to get notified. Samsung has partnered with Decentraland to open its flagship 837 store in the metaverse. However, the virtual Samsung 837 store will only be open in Decentraland for a limited time. The store itself is a virtual version of the 837 physical store in New York City. The Samsung 837X store will offer digital adventures through Connectivity Theater and Sustainability Forest, and a musical celebration at the customization stage, said Samsung. Guests will also be invited to participate in quests that lead to 837X NFT badges and one of three limited supply wearables. This is the latest in a string of metaverse announcements and investments made by Samsung. And that was all the updates I had for this week, everyone. As always, there seems to be quite a bit going on in the metaverse these days, and the first week of 2022 is no exception. While it looks like we're in the bit of a crypto lull, we're in the bit of an NFT bull market as well. So there's lots of projects, lots of games, lots of different things coming out, especially over the course of this year that I think are going to garner some major attention, and I can't wait to cover those for all of you. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching this video today. If you have any comments or opinions on any of the topics I covered here, Make sure to add those down below in the comment section. I would love to hear those. I hope you all have a fantastic day, an excellent weekend, and until next time, we'll see you soon.